Jesus. We bind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we say thank you, oh God, that you're worthy. We say thank you, oh God, that you're worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. We say, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We dare not go into anything without your spirit. We dare not usher it into the to intercession without your grace. We dare not go into rebuking without your, without your permission. We dare not go into territories that we have not been given access granted. We dare not, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Help me pray. Help me pray. God, I thank you if you're if you're on online with us. If you're on the phone, help me pray. If you're on Facebook, type it in. Help me pray. Hallelujah! Tonight we're going on a we're going we're doing something different. We're going on another level. We're just doing something completely different. Hallelujah! Gee, there God has a word for His people. God has a word for His for His chosen ones. God has a for those remnant. God has a word for His prophets. God has a word for his apostles. God has a word for the body of Christ. God has a word for the children of God. God has a word for the servants of the Lord. He has for every one of us. Hallelujah, Jesus. So Father, I pray right now that we have the ears to hear. I pray that we have the eyes to see. I pray right now, oh God, your word says that you, you, you wish to tell us more things, but we can't even handle it. Father, right now we say thank you. And it is done, and it is your will, and it is your will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. First of all, I just want to say, um, Good evening to everybody. Hi, hello, good morning. I don't know what time it is. I don't know uh, where you are, what time it is. <laughs> but um, make sure your phones are, um, if, if your background is loud, mute it. If, it's, if you can pray, if you can get a prayer in with us, um, unmute yourself. But tonight is going to be very, very weighty. It's a weighty word. God has an urgent an urgency there's an urgent message for us mm, hallelujah 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 jesus a lot of people get nervous when god has a word and if you get nervous when god has a word that means we got to get in right standing got to get in right standing we should never run from the word of the Lord. We should be in a place where we accept rebuke and revelation. We should be in a place where we can receive both things. Revelation comes with rebuke. Rebuke comes with revelation. You got to know how to steward the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, let me know when I can start. Hallelujah. Who am I tarrying for, Lord? Am I, if you want me to tarry a little bit longer, I will tarry just a little bit longer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I know this is a weighty word because stuff is starting to get activated. Stuff is starting to just start freaking out stuff that don't normally be happening so father god right now we take authority over it we take authority over it in the name of jesus we command everything in this atmosphere that if you are not of god if you are not like god that right now you we command you to flee this presence flee this atmosphere flee this place right now in the name of jesus you have no lot in this conversation you have no lot in this matter so right now, everything that is not like God, be loosed in the name of Jesus. We bind you back to the pit of hell. We cast you down back to the abyss. So Father, right now, let the word of God burn by fire and by force. Everything that is not like God, every monitoring agent, every monitoring spirit, every witchcraft spirit, we command you, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebukes you. The Lord rebukes you. He will be an adversary to our adversaries. 
Holy Spirit, we ask you, we invite you into this place. We say, settle here, Lord. Settle here, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be with us, God. And release this word to us, God. We call on you, Rabbi. And we say, speak, Holy Ghost. We call on you, Rabbi. Hallelujah. And say, have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Um, okay, so... As you can see by the title of this thing um, earlier, as you can see that there is a word from the Lord. There's some vipers that the Lord showed me on last night that, that we have to address. There's some things that need to be rebuked. There's some things that need to be um, cast down. And so I'm just going to tell you first what the dream was, and then I'm going to give you the interpretation of it and how it pertains to the believer as a whole. Um, this is a prophetic word of warning. Uh, Proverbs, uh, Psalms 127 and 1 from the Berean Study Bible. It says, uh, a song of accent of Solomon. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain unless the lord protects the city its watchmen stand guard in vain god is saying that unless the city is protected by him it does not matter what protocol you put in position it does not matter what bills you pass what laws you pass if god is not invited if he's not in it there is no protection everything you do is vanity it's in vain and there's a lot of things going on in the, um, um, what do you call it? The, um, in the government, there's a lot of things going on where they're trying to implement some, some, some keys and some situations to keep us from, um, you know, having our schools broken into. They're trying to help us from, you know, keep us from having our children hurt and malls being shot up in schools and all this stuff. But the thing that the Lord does not like is the fact that they are, when it's convenient, they want to use his name in vain. When it's convenient, they want to quote scripture. When it's convenient and they have nothing else to say because they lack empathy, demons do not uh, sympathize with people. They do not empathize with our situation. And so the, when they have nothing to say, they try to find quotes and scriptures to present before the nations but then they remove prayer out of our schools they remove god out of the the, the, the police stations they remove him out of public places they remove him out of um, the area they remove him out of um, the school system and so what we have is vanity it's okay to pray and it's okay to quote scripture when it's convenient, but it's not okay for kids to do it, uh, you know, every day when they open up school, every, you know, afternoon when they're leaving school. So God is not pleased with the way our city is. God says our city is unprotected. And so I'm going to pause this. Um, I'm going to pause this because I want to, I want you guys to be able to hear me, but, um, Miss Helen, I seen you try to call me, but I can't answer. You're gonna have, you figure out how to unmute your phone if you want to talk to me. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this dream that I had, and um, in the dream, um, I'm probably I wrote it down, but I don't. I'm not going to read the read the whole dream. But in this dream last night. I was in a, like a gym, a gymnasium, a huge gym. And this gym, you know, most like most gyms have bleachers. This gym was a spiritual place and it did not have bleachers. It, in fact, the things that people were sitting on were couches and the couches were dirty. In fact, they were so, they were so dirty and so filthy that I didn't want to sit on them and, and I didn't. In fact, I left. I left the, uh, 
the place. And so um, what that what that represented, the gymnasium represented many. Um, you know, normally in a gym, there's some type of competition, there's some type of um, sport or something being played that causes the opponent and um, the, you know, the winning team or whoever the team is that they're competing with to be in the same place. So you'll have two sides of people in this um, gathering. And so the gymnasium represents a, a lot of people, a really big place. And the couches represent, you know, this place, this gathering represents the church. God was showing me how big his church is. The couches represent coming to church comfortable. The church is way too comfortable. If you could go to church and flop down in like a really comfortable chair, it's probably too comfortable and it's probably not God. Um, the church is not, was never meant to be a comfortable place. It was never meant to be a place where you sit back and have fashion shows. The, the church was, is, is, is a place where you get correction. The, when you follow Jesus in every temple he went to, every synagogue he went to, he was casting out devils. He was teaching the word of God. He was delivering. He was coming up against opposition. Um, people who was coming to hear him just so that they can oppose him. And so when we come to church and we're comfortable and we just want to shout hallelujah and we just want to dance all around God is not in that and so in fact the people who can discern it like in the dream I recognized that the chairs the couch was so dirty I, I didn't want to sit there and so people like me who can discern that this church is not right will leave and the people who cannot discern they sit down in filthy seats that are comfortable so God is saying we're comfortable in dysfunctional situations Again, in this dream, I began to walk out and there was an apostle who I recognized. I won't say his name. Uh, I'm praying about if I'm to call him or not to release this word, but um, hopefully he'll watch this and the Lord will speak to him. But this apostle, and I don't mean no harm, but um, again, I don't show favoritism. I'm not... Um, prejudice to anyone. I'm not biased. I, I'm no respecter of persons. As a prophet of God, I speak what I see regardless who it is. And so with that being said, I don't mean any harm. Like I said, I'm not going to say their name, but this is what I saw. Um, this apostle caught me as I was leaving. And he said, hey, don't forget to come back at seven. I'm going to release a powerful message tonight. And so, you know, I said, okay. And so I left. Uh, the dream took me to, I guess it fast forwarded to seven o'clock because I was now walking back to the gym. And as I was walking, I was behind the apostle. I was behind this apostle. And I instantly noticed that he had, um, some pillows, you know, like a sleep pillow that you sleep on. He had a pillow under his arm. And I, I remember thinking to myself, oh, you know, I better get one. And so I had a pillow that I was going to use to sit on because I remember the chairs were dirty. And so I was going to bring like a cushion to sit on. So I had a cushion and he had a pillow, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why he needed one when he was going to be standing up preaching. Um, and so we're walking, I'm walking behind him. And then all of a sudden I saw on my left, like a group of young boys and they were excited. They were asking him, Hey, you know, apostle, what you teaching tonight? What's the word tonight? And, you know, the apostle didn't answer him. He turned to look at them. And while he was walking, he was walking really, really slow. He was really, really heavy. He was really slow. And um, just very sluggard, very just slow. And so I wound up passing him. I surpassed him. And I was no longer in back of him. I was in front of him. And I was going really fast. And so somehow I got rid of that cushion. I was in the gym. He never showed up to the gym. I never even seen him again after this, after him with the, with the pillow. So I'm sitting in this gym. There was a crowd full of people 
and they were waiting for the message. And I began to release the message um, of what the apostle was supposed to do. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do walk in the apostolic anointing as well as the prophetic. Um, this is something the Lord showed me like a year or two ago um, where I had a dream where a street sign was over me and the first one that went to the right said apostle and the one that went to the left said prophet. And so the Lord flip-flops me in different seasons on different levels. And so just wanted to clear that up. So in this moment, I'm walking as the apostle because the apostle was slow um, and sluggard and comfortable. He had that pillow. And so I had my phone in the dream sitting in this in the bleachers, um, not the bleachers, sitting in the um on the on the front row. And all of a sudden, just like I'm doing right now. My phone was on PowerPoint, just like I'm using right now. And while I was on the, um, my phone was on PowerPoint, it suddenly, um, it was like a huge TV screen, just like if you go to the movies, it was this huge screen that my phone somehow connected to. And so what I had on my phone, what I was typing in on my phone, was typing on the screen. And so God is really speaking, you guys. Um, there's a lot going on here just in the first half of this dream. You got an apostle that's sluggard, an apostle that's lazy. You do not go to the pulpit with a pillow. That means you're about to preach something that's safe and comfortable. And that's not what apostles do. Um, these young guys, they were saying, what's the word? What's the word? They were excited but then they had no response. There was no um, encouragement so that they could actually show up. Um, and then you have this gym with no bleachers, but there's couches. That represents the church as a whole, the body of Christ. We are coming to church and we're so comfortable with dysfunction. There's, oh my goodness, when I get to the second half of this dream, it's gonna blow some of y'all mind. Um, I know it blew my mind, but there, there was no um, clean place, no clean space to sit, to hear the word of God. And God was showing me what he is seeing from the church as a whole, from his point of view. That's what's on the heart of God. That's what's on the mind of God. That's what he's thinking. And so what I got to see was a glimpse of what God is seeing regarding his church. These couches we got to get up out of this sluggard place. We got to get out of this comfortable place and we got to get out of the dirty place. We, you know, the body of Christ, are we are in danger. We're, the devil is about to have his way. If you have not noticed, he's already having his way because a lot of us are asleep. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so in this dream, um, there were the people who were lined up sitting at, I don't know if they were still sitting in couches or what, because at this point I'm in the front row and I can't see what's going on behind me. But these people were now looking, they were seeing um, what, what I was writing. And so I had my phone and just like the screen, like you can see right here in front of you, this is what the screen looked like in my dream. There was a PowerPoint presentation. It was a white screen. And I wrote, I began to write the word spiritual, really big. And there was some more that I wrote to it. I can't remember what it was, but um, it was something along the lines of uh, spiritual attacks is not meant to be slept on, ignored or taken lightly. I wrote something to that effect in the dream. Um, but what I can definitely remember was the word spiritual. And it was on the screen. And I remember the people in the, um, the people inside of the um, gymnasium, they were saying, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, we need that. That's something that we need. Um, this is going to be good. I can hear the different people, the different voices. And the next thing that I did, I typed in on the phone and then the PowerPoint changed. And this was on the second screen. The second screen said, uh, it was a white background and it simply had the word discernment. 
That's all there was. And so the first page said, the first slide said spiritual. The second slide said discernment. God is saying we, we lack spiritual discernment. The word discernment literally means the ability to judge well. It's not a gift. It's not something in the Bible that God gives you. It's something that we're all born with. It's called common sense. Many of us lack it. Many of us do not have common sense. We, we lack the ability to judge well. We are an astonishing, we have an astonishing lack of discernment. The Lord is saying spiritual discernment. It was flashing on the screen. And at this point, I was fed up. I remember thinking, this is just too much. It's, I'm too exhausted. This is exhausting. There's no way I can type all of this out right here, right now, and get it on this screen in time for everybody to see. So I remember getting up, and as I was walking out of the gym, I remember the screen moving all by itself, like the slides began to turn all by themselves without me. Um, but they did not have words like the words I wrote the words, but the page, the slide began to turn and there were children, rows and rows and rows of children. And I can hear them playing. It was like a video slide of children playing on the next slide. And the Lord was telling the people, you need spiritual discernment because these children do not have people covering them with it. So the church needs to have spiritual discernment. At this point, I, I left the gym and I went outside. There was some, some young boys again, but they had a vendor. They had some type of vending machine and I had got a chocolate chip cookie. I said, I'm, 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 I'm wore out, I'm exhausted, I'm tired. I said, I need something to lift me up, to pick me up. To, you know, cheer me up. And so one of the young guys gave me a chocolate chip cookie. Well, when I taste the cookie, it was good. And I said, I'm gonna have a glass of milk to go with it. When I looked at the cup that he was about to hand me, the whole bottom of the cup was out. It was a styrofoam white cup. It was a stack of them, like six or seven cups. And the first one that I picked up had a hole in the bottom. And I thought to myself, you can't pour nothing in this. And so I said, give me another cup. He handed me another stack of cups. And when I tilted to look in it, there were, the bottom was not out, but on the sides of the styrofoam cup, there was a whole bunch of tiny holes. And I said, you, these, you cannot use these. And so I remember checking all of the cups and either they had a hole in the bottom, they were full of holes down the sides or they were dirty. I mean, just dirty. They, I mean, these cups look like they had been in someone's garage or basement for years upon years upon years. They were filthy. And I said, you cannot pour me any milk with these cups. What this represents, the cookie is, is what people are getting when they come to church. They're getting stuff that feel good, sound good, taste good, smell good, all that foolishness, but there's no milk in it. You can't even drink. You can't consume anything out of it. There's no word attached to it. It just feels good. It tastes good. It soothes you. It calms you down for the moment. And it's a temporary high. It's a temporary um, enjoyment. It's a, it's a false peace. And so um, I left. I walked off once again without being able to drink this milk. And so all through this dream, the Lord was showing me me having to walk off from stuff. And it, he was showing me what his people are doing. Those of us who have discernment, those of us who are in relationship with the Lord, those of us who are where we're supposed to be, we can't even get what we need because the place we discern is no good. Uh, the beginning of this dream, I had to walk out because the couch was dirty. The second half, I had to walk out because of overexhaustion. And then now I'm walking away from getting milk. So as I was walking away from the milk, I heard some women crying out, help. You know, they were screaming, angel, help. We need some help. We need some, we need some help. And I said, what is it? What, what's going on? Well, they said there are, um, there's, there's some vipers. And so I remember all of a sudden 
I was in this real high place. Like I was in the gym again, but way up high in the gym. And so I remember there was like these bars and I looked down and I could see the black um, viper slithering around real fast on the ground. Somehow, supernaturally, I was down on that first level and I grabbed the viper with my bare hands and I um, picked him up by his neck, by his throat. And I remember walking up these stairs to a window, a high, a high place with a window. And I cried out for some help. Once again, I'm needing some help. And there was a girl, I don't know who she was. She was just a girl. And I said, open up the window for me. She opened it up real high. So, you know, if the higher you lift it, when you pull it down, it'll slam. So when she lifted up real high, that was good. And so I put the Viper in the window and she slammed it. And so it took his head off. Well, there was another Viper. They started screaming again. There was a second one. And I looked over the railing again. This one was bigger, meaner, faster, darker. Everything about this second Viper was um, terrifying and the people were screaming. And so I jumped down again. This time I had to pick the Viper up with two hands because of how big he was. I could not let him go. I could not hold him with one hand. He was wiggling, his face was so big. And so I had him uh, barely, just barely around his neck. And I, I remember feeling like, oh my God, he bit me, uh, you know, because he was so close. His fangs, you can feel the heat from his fangs, even if it didn't touch you. The heat of it, you can almost feel it on your skin. So I remember having to try, I don't know, the Lord gave me strategy where I was able to wiggle my hands a little further down without letting him go. And so once again, I began to walk up these steps, carrying him to the window. And once again, I, I called for some help. I'm like, you got to open the window. And there was another girl, this girl, I don't know what was wrong with her, but she only opened the window partially. She didn't open it up real high like the other girl did. And so when I put him out the window, it wasn't high enough to take his head off. All he did was fall back. And I remember being so high up that I looked out of the window and he dropped, y'all. It had to be like seven feet. Everything in his dream was seven, sevens and sevens. And he dropped, we had to be like seven stories high. And I remember him just swirling all the way down, boom. He hit the ground and then slithered into the grass. And I thought to myself, how he survived that kind of fall? Well, clearly when I woke up, um, I was distraught. I was in a, I was in a place where I'm like, Lord, what you want me to do? You know, what, what is all of this? What is this? What does this mean? What is the revelation? Um, and the Lord said, look at the symbols and then find it in the word and then put it all together. And so basically what the whole dream was, well, it was a warning. It was a warning. Whether you choose to believe me or not, I am highly confident that the Lord will reveal, that the Lord will confirm, that the Lord is going to do exactly what I'm about to say. Um, I believe that he's doing it already. But the first thing that, that stood out to me was those vipers. The viper, the second one, oh, I left a part out. The second viper that was big, when I had my hands around his throat, I, rem I told you I remember his fangs was hot. It felt like he had sunk them in my skin, but he didn't. But that's just how hot his fangs was. And I remember I couldn't see but I sensed there was an atop, a bubbling up, just a knowing that he was shooting out venom out of his, his fangs in midair. There was, his teeth was not into anything because I had him gripped up, but his fangs were still shooting out venom. And because I couldn't physically see it and I didn't want to turn him to look, I, what I did was the Lord gave me another strategy as I was carrying him up, up the stairs to throw him out of the window, I stood him in front of a wall. When I stood him in front of the wall, um, 
I looked and I could tell that he had, um, what you call it, uh, venom. There was like droplets on the wall dripping down. And so I said, oh yeah, he's definitely got some venom that is shooting out of his fangs. And so I had to keep him a certain way. And when I called the girl to open the window for me, I let her know, hey, I cannot, I cannot take my hands off of him. You're going to have to help me. God is saying, we're going to have to start helping one another. There's so much to put on one person. Um, this coming Saturday, I know we're doing prayer. I, I, I've been asking God how he wants to lead us in prayer. What does he want us to pray for? I believe, and this is week four of, of what to pray. This is actually telling us how to pray. Holy Spirit will tell you how to pray. And I've been saying it all month of May that this, that the Lord said the first half of this year up until June, we're going to see some serious demonic strongholds. But the second half of the year, there's going to, for those of us who endured the first half of this year, there's going to be blessings upon blessings upon blessings every day for the second half of this year. But we still got another month to go of enduring some stuff. And I truly believe that the, the there are several messages in this dream. The first thing says, um, in Matthew 12, 34 to 37, it says, oh, generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, verse 35 says, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the good out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. First of all, because I saw two vipers, that means this, this thing has been established. There are four verses in the Bible that mentions vipers as a, as a generation of people. Oh, generation of vipers. The body of Christ has become vipers. And if you remember, vipers are not non-believers. They're not people who are backslidden. These are religious people, people who believe the bishop, the apostle, the prophet that believe that, oh, I'm just in right standing. Oh, I'm perfect. I'm, I'm, you know, I've arrived. These are people who, oh, I keep the word. Oh, I'm not sinning. Oh, I'm not in homosexuality. Oh, I don't fornicate. Oh, I'm not, I don't cuss. Oh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't. These are generation of vipers. And God says there are a ton of them in the body of Christ. They are vipers and they can't even discern that the two words that kept popping, that kept radiating was spiritual discernment. We lack it. The venom, the, 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 um, the serpent that I saw, he was shooting out venom out of his veins just while I'm holding his throat, while I'm holding his neck. He still was contagious. He still was lethal. He still was deadly, even when he's being contained. And so this is a, this is a, um, I'm going to tell you what spirit this is, what came to my heart. I didn't get a chance to write the, the scripture down. But Matthew 23, 33 says this, um, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? This thing has a venom so lethal that if you don't know how to capture it and get rid of it the proper way, all you're doing is risking yourself trying to, trying to take it on and then letting it go. You're just releasing it back into your household and you're releasing a spirit of religion. You're releasing religiousness. You know, that, that, that's idolatry. It's religious. It's tradition. You're just releasing that stuff. Right Every time you go to a religious place, religious church, um, following religious leaders, you're just caught up in a religious spirit and you're not getting any, you're not getting what you need. Um, but these two, these two vipers, the behavior, they kind of remember, they, they, they um, brought to my remembrance of two people in the Bible. Uh, because there was mostly women and children in the gym that was screaming that this snake was after, this, vi this viper was after, it wasn't a snake. This thing looked, this thing looked hideous. 
It was black, but it, I don't know if y'all ever seen one of those. I don't even know what they're called. They look like lizards, but they look like a snake and they got front legs. I don't, I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but they look funny. They got a funny shaped head. It kind of looked like that, but it was really evil, really demonic. It was real black. And in the dream, I called it a viper. I knew it was a viper. Um, but the behavior of these two vipers re resembled Jezebel and Jezebel's daughter. I don't know how much y'all know about Jezebel's daughter at the lion, but Jezebel was the one pushed out of the window. At the lion was the one who killed all the children in her family so that she could reign, that she could be queen. These, the Lord showed me that these two demons, these two spirits are released from hell. They are here. They are entering into 17 year old minds, 18 year old minds, causing them to just go back crazy. They are becoming suicidal. They're becoming murderous. They're doing all of this stuff because those two spirits are operating in them. This is an attack on children. Um, I, I can't even begin to go into it. Saturday, I, I got a whole chart where I broke down the different things I've been seeing in the spirit and what has actually already come to pass. And so there's a there's a lot that we just have not addressed. And, and, and the number seven, Remember, the apostle said, come back at seven and I'm going to preach and I'm going to have a powerful message. Only he never showed up. He never came back. He was super slow and he had that pillow tells me that you weren't going to speak anything spectacular or special for me. You was going to speak something comfortable for everybody else. And the people who were comfortable when sitting in filthy couches, which is definitely not me. I'm not about to go sit anywhere. Um, and so... This apostle is out of order. I mean, there's no other way to put it. You're out of order. He's out of order. Um, you're not preaching what God has told you to preach. You're preaching comfortable. You're teaching safe. And you're not preaching hell. You're not preaching repentance. You're not preaching what thus says the Lord. And you're not teaching um, anything to help sustain people. You're not giving them any milk. Um, these cups are filthy. The cups represent us. Folks, people, um, it's just the Lord is the Lord is just not pleased. So what's God saying? This is what He's saying. Whew, Lord help me, Jesus. The dirty couches represent being too comfortable during assembling and gathering. We're way too comfortable, way too comfortable. If you go to church and you're just happy go lucky, you running and you shouting and you jumping and you doing and you hooping and you hopping and doing all this stuff. And then you leave out and you still in sin, you got absolutely nothing. You just did all of that for nothing. And God was not in it because nothing about you has changed. You did not gain any um, strategies on how to fight your situation. You're tired. So that means Satan used you because when God uses us, it's, it's uplifting, it's edifying, um, it's glorifying him. And he said his burden is light. His yoke is easy. So if you're exhausted, you're ready to go on a sabbatical, you're tired, you can't do your normal daily activities, you're not doing what you should be doing, then Satan has just used you and you were, you were unable to discern it. The church as a whole is lacking spiritual discernment. Um, and you're functioning in, this, in a dysfunctional environment. There's no way I'm walking into a place where I'm supposed to get the word of God and the, the, there's couches that how what <laughs> the Lord is saying we might as well drag couches into the church because that's what we're doing we're having a good time he's not having a good time because he's not even able to speak and and half of the people that are in there vessels are dirty he can't even fill you up because there's a hole somewhere there's a hole at the bottom of your cup Everything that went in just went out. There's whole, tiny holes all along the walls. So everything that gets in eventually is poured out. Or your cup is just chewed up, messed up, and, and is, it can't hold anything. The Bible says that when, when this parable of the sower, when he sowed, some, some seeds fell on good ground, fertile ground, but some seeds fell by the wayside. Some fell on stony ground. They were pecked at. You know, you got to examine your cup. Can your cup hold the word of God? Is it barely holding the milk of the word? Or can you 
the, the dream I had before that, the night before last, I had a freezer full of meat and the meat was in packages. And when I say the meat was more than a freezer can actually hold in the natural, this was supernatural. And it was not all that I had. I had to give some away. And then I had to, um, somebody asked me, did you get an increase? Was that, was, is this all of it? And I said, no, I, there's, this is not even half of it. There's more, but I can't, I gotta get rid of some of it. Some of us are not in a position where we can eat meat or hold meat, house meat, because we're in a position where the milk barely can stay in us, can stay in our vessel. So in the, in the dream, the pastor said, come back at seven. Seven is a time. When he said, come back at seven, he was speaking of an hour, a time. There are exactly seven days until June 1st from the time I had this dream, including today. There's seven, it was seven days until June 1st. Saturday, we're having intercession. I'm gonna tell y'all this and you can do it and not, or not, it's up to you, but it's not gonna be on my conscience because I'm getting it off of me right now. The next seven days, if you are an intercessor, if you are called as an apostle, if you are called as a prophet, if you are called as an evangelist, if you are called as a teacher, a pastor, whatever, if you are called in the ministry of helps, if God has called you to be a servant, he's called you to pray. And we have exactly about seven days of prayer that we can get out or else we're going to see more mass shootings. This is not done. This is just the beginning. We're going to see another mass shooting. We're going to see more children involved. We're going to see more teenagers involved. There's going to be some more um, killings if we do not bind this, this demon, this spirit, these vipers, that Jezebel, that Athaliah that's after the children so it can reign. There are witches after children so they can reign. There are people in politics, politicians, lawyers, doctors who are in um, with in bed with the devil. They don't mind that you have third trimester abortions. They don't mind that there's a shortage in, in infant milk. They don't mind that there's an, um, a, 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 a hepatitis B pandemic in children. They don't mind that there are children drowning at the border trying to get across. They don't mind this stuff because whoever is responsible for that area is getting power. This is why they took prayer out of the churches. This, I mean, they took prayer out of the schools. This is why you can't talk about Jesus as a teacher, but yet they can sit there in front of millions on national TV and quote the Bible, talk about we're going to pray for families. Why is it okay for presidents to pray, but it's not okay for teachers? Somebody need to start talking about this stuff. The, the Lord said, we are lacking spiritual discernment. We're not discerning that these politicians are oxymorons. They're telling one thing that we can't do, but then they do it. They're taking, the, the Bibles are not allowed. Christian literature is not allowed, but yet they make you swear on a Bible in a courthouse. Come, th this thing just don't make it make sense. We'll call ya da da da. Hallelujah, Jesus. Apostles are supposed to be at the forefront. If you're slow in the spirit and you are an apostle, God is not pleased. You are lazy. You are lazy. If you are um, sluggard, and I think uh, Miss Helen has a prophetic word to release. The Lord gave her about, um, what is it, Miss Helen? Slumber. I think she said sl slothful. Something she said about the Lord gave her a word that coincides with what I'm saying, but the apostles are supposed to be at the forefront. This particular apostle, I was behind him and whatever he did got him sidetracked that I, that I surpassed him. What happens is when the apostles are out of order, the next in line, the runner up, the prophet has to step into position. When the prophets are out of line, then the next runner up, the evangelist has to step into position. When the evangelist is out of position, then you have the pastor who has to step in. They have to do the apostles work, the prophets ministry and the, evangelist, the, the evangelism of the church. When all four of them are out of position, the little old teacher got to come in and do all five. God is, his plan does not change only the man. God, the man will change depending on who is willing. If you are a willing vessel, God can use you to operate in the apostolic. He can use you to operate in the prophetic. He can use you to operate in any one of those offices as he so chooses. I flip-flop. 
in this season coming up, I'm going to be operating in the apostolic because there are some things that is on my heart that got to be said that the prophet in me probably wouldn't say, but the apostle in me will. I sure will. I don't care who it is because I'd rather see you saved. I'd rather see you living right. And I'd rather see you blessed than, the, than to know, knowingly, willingly see somebody going down to hell. That, that will not sit right on me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Apostles are supposed to be in the forefront. They're supposed to be leading. The, the, the prophet should not be surpassing. The evangelist should not be surpassing because they are, they are sluggard and slumber and out of commission. Um, we're, we're, we are to be slow in, in speech, not slow and stagnated in our walk. When God told the, when Jesus told the disciples that I'm sending you out, they didn't um, hesitate. They went. They, they left. When Elijah ordained and anointed Elisha, Elisha didn't, didn't, didn't you know, hover around and stay around. He got, he put his house in order and left. All this, let me, let me get, wait, I'm coming. That, you know, when God calls you, well, let me pray on it some more. Let me see, let me wait for a confirmation. That means you don't have a relation with God where you can trust his voice the first time. And as an apostle, that's not going to fly. That's not going to fly at all. We cannot be slow. We cannot be stagnant. We cannot be out of commission. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because God will then begin to delegate to the second in command, the prophets. The body of Christ are not spiritually mature. This is why the milk was flowing out of the cup. I was like, I can't even drink. Can't even drink this. But the cookie was so good. The bite that I took, the cookie was so good. The cookie represents... That, you know, that cookie that you get when you go to church, you, you're not getting no milk. You're getting that feel good, appease your, 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 your dopamines, get them flowing and juicing. And then when you get out of church, somebody asks you, but what was the message about? You'd be like, I don't know, but it was good. It was good. Yeah, but I can't tell you what it was like. I can't tell you. I can't tell you how that cookie was. I just know that it was a good cookie. Um, but you need milk. You don't need to be going nowhere that's giving you no candy, giving you no cookie, no treat. I don't want a treat. I want the word because when I go home and when I, when I lay down at night, when I get up in the morning, I got real devils after me and I need some strategy. I need some clarity. I need some understanding. I need, I need revelation. I need word, word of knowledge and word of wisdom. I need somebody praying for me, covering me that God is going to show them, Hey, look, one of your sheep is about to be in trouble. Go to war for them. I don't need no cookie word. I don't need to get comfortable in a dysfunctional situation. I'm not about to function in dysfunction. Unclean vessels. We are the vessels of God. Unclean cups. That means God can't fill you up because you're this, this, somebody done punch holes all up in it. Um, you're either religious or um, you know, in sin, habitual sin, whatever the case may be backslidden, whatever the case may be, your vessel, you're going to have to repent. We have to repent so that our cups can start to be washed so that God can purify us, that he can shine us up like gold, not no, not no cheap, flimsy styrofoam cup that can be squashed, but you want to be a, a good vessel, a cup that shined to perfection. Hallelujah. We are unable to receive rebuke or revelation. In this season, we got to get to a place where we are. What is that? I don't know. Something is agitating me. When you um, when you're in a place where you can receive rebuke, you can receive revelation. A lot of us want revelation, 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 but God is not going to show us no revelation if you cannot first receive rebuke. God can't chastise you. Why would He trust you with stuff that's private, that's sacred, that's a secret? Why would He? Why would anybody? Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28 says, and God has placed some in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. God has put us in position for a reason. These three in 1 Corinthians, it doesn't even mention the evangelist or the pastor because these three have a different unique role. They're going to have to operate together because if one fall out of commission, the other's going to have to know how to operate in both those lanes. God is doing some dual lessons where he's training you in how to go out and evangelize. God is training you on how to walk in the prophetic. God is training you in how to build up people and how to build up other ministries, how to build, how to plant, 
how to begin to construct some, some structure for the body of Christ. This is what apostles are supposed to do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Proverbs 6, 4 through 14 says, allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. When you slumber and you're on a wall, you're supposed to be on the wall. When somebody you know is up praying and you're like, I'm going to sleep. Um, once again, Saturday night at nine, we're going to be praying. You know, if you're not, if you're not convicted and you're free and you're not praying, something is wrong. Something is wrong. You're, you're not free. Because he, he that is free, who the son says free is free indeed. You are free to pray. You have liberty to speak. You pronounce and you profess and you see it come to pass. But if you are asleep and you know the church is praying, the, the by the way, the church is not a building in the, in, the, in the Bible. The church was, whenever you saw the word church, it talked about a group of people in a particular location. The church of Antioch, the church, you know, the church of Ephesus, the church of Colossae. The Church of Galatia. These are these are people, not buildings. So when the church, when I say the church, when the body of Christ is praying, and you're asleep, he says, "Free yourself." The, you know, like a gazelle from the hand of a hunter, you are in the hand, the wrong hands. Like a bird from the snare of the fowler, you in a trap. Somebody done bewitched you. You in a, you done been tricked. You've been bamboozled. Verse six says, "Go to the ant, you sluggard." Consider its ways and be wise. If you're dreaming and you're seeing ants, you're seeing deer, you're seeing gazelles, you're seeing birds. God is saying, I need you to wake up. I'm trying to tell you something. Hallelujah. You need to go to the, look to the ant and be wise. You need to, you need to stop being so sluggard and lazy. Verse seven, it has no commander, no overseer or ruler. The ant don't have no overseer, don't have no bishop. They don't have no apostle. They don't have no prophet. Yet they get the stuff done. That is a servant. That is a worker. God has said, I need you to not have to have somebody all the time waking you up, telling you it's time to pray, telling you it's time for Bible study, telling you it's time for this, telling you it's time for that. But you ought to be able to get up on your own accord and be ready. Verse eight, get it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. This is the season where we ought to be gathering provision. Gathering provision because come fall, there's going to be a harvest. The second half of this year, for those of us who have endured, there's going to be a harvest. You're going to be able to reap what you have been doing. The body of Christ, when the Lord was showing me that when I was, when I was holding those vipers, I needed somebody to open a window. Paul said, one plants, another waters, God gives the increase. We can't all do it by ourselves. If somebody is holding the viper, if somebody is holding the prophetic word, then make sure you're covering them. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you open up the window so that demon can get out. Make sure you're covering and hovering over that atmosphere. Don't let one person be doing all the work. God is saying a whole lot of this, and this is why he's showing it. Um, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? When will you get up from being lazy and start being about your father's business? When are you going to give me 15? When are you going to go in that prayer closet? When are you going to go in that prayer corner, put your timer on 15 minutes and pray nonstop without distraction so that I can give you 15 minutes of revelation. 15 minutes of revelation is worth a thousand days, a thousand days of nothing, just pure sluggardness, sleepiness laziness. I'd rather have 15 minutes of revelation that can give me a lifetime of blessings and prosperity and peace here on earth than to spend all that time sleep. He says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come at you. Poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. Poverty don't have to always be money. You can lack discernment, spiritual discernment. You can lack revelation. You don't have a clue what to do. You can lack um, clarity. You, you just confused all the time. That's poverty when you're in lack of something. A troublemaker and a villain. Now you, you, you constantly causing trouble in other people's lives because you got nothing to overflow into them. There's no overflow. There's just you know an empty cup 
and anything can shoot inside of those cups. Anything can store up in a nasty cup. A troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth. Ooh, Jesus. And who winks maliciously with his eye. Signals with his feet and motions with his fingers. All of this dancing and hooping they doing. And they know ain't nothing good in it who plots evil with deceit in his heart and he always stirs up conflict. John 4, 52, in the King James says, then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. I'm telling y'all, I believe that seven is the prophetic number in this hour. There are seven days till June 1st. God is saying, if we can pray these seven days, the fever will leave the nation. The fever, this thing that is killing, it's a premature death. It's a spirit of murder, a spirit of um, anger, a spirit of hatred. Ooh. The Lord says in seven days, don't, at the seventh hour, the fever left. I'm telling you, if we can just begin to pray like we've never prayed before. The Lord showed me a gymnasium full of people. I believe by the end of seven days, there's going to be enough people who have heard and watched this video that are going to begin to be stirred up. They're going to be like, when the next time you praying? I already got a message from somebody in a whole nother country. Can you tell me when the next time y'all praying? I'm going to wake up. I want to be a part of it. When the next time y'all praying? Listen, we got to get on the wall. It's time to get on the wall. It's time for this fever, this, this pestilence to go. It needs to leave. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither staff, nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. That's Luke 9 and 3. The apostle walking with that pillow, uh -uh, bruh. Mm -mm. you you carrying too much. What, what you need that for? You about to go to sleep? You about to put the people to sleep? Mm -mm. We, just, we just go, we go. Hebrews 5.13, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Um, we, like I said, babes, we can't even get that milk because our vessels is unclean. Our cups are dirty. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are the treasure. We, we have this treasure in our vessels. We carry it. We're not going to carry nothing in no plastic, beat up styrofoam cup. We house a king. We house a king, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace. He's not about to dwell in that. Now we got to do better. We got to ask the Holy Spirit to examine us tonight. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to examine us. Lord, where is my, where is my cup? Is my cup, can you, can you? Are you dwelling in it? What's in my cup, Lord? Is, does it need to be purified? Does it need to be washed? Does it need to be repaired? Does it need to be restored? Hallelujah, Jesus. Does it need to be shined? Does it need to be purified? Does it need to be purged? What's wrong, Lord? Show me me. Am I slumber? Am I carrying a pillow to church? Am I carrying a pillow in the pulpit? Am I a preacher that's, that's preaching um, safe messages? What am I doing, Lord? Show me. Um, am I a generation of vipers? Am I foolish? Am I religious? He'll show you. I believe God will show you. Hallelujah, Jesus. So tonight we're just going to pray. Hallelujah. If you're on here tonight, if you're watching, if you're listening, and you're just like, oh my God, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. I just need my cup to be washed. Lord, wash me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, purify me. I need to be released from these things that I've been doing in this hour. Um, you can just say me. You can put your hand up. You can just, um, you know, begin to pray this prayer with me. But we got to do better. We got to do better. I do believe the Lord is really watching I believe the spirit of the Lord is hovering over us. I believe he's hovering over the nation. He's hovering over the land. He's sorely displeased. His babies are being murdered. His babies are dying of, of starvation. His babies are dying of sickness. They're, you know, they're, they're not getting their needs met. 
they're they're su- they're suicidal. They're thinking that nobody loves them, nobody wants them. And let me tell you what the Bible says: If you are a laborer, where's your harvest? He said the harvest is truly plentiful. Where's your harvest? Why aren't you ministering to these people in your neighborhood? People in your in your neighborhood commit suicide. People in your community are strung out. Children in your neighborhood, probably next door, are not getting fed, and you can't discern. There's no spiritual discernment. There's no spiritual discernment. You don't even know where the laborers are. You, I mean, the harvest is. You don't even know who needs what. So at this point, if you are a laborer, Lord, send me the harvest. If you're the harvest and you need a laborer, Lord, send me a laborer. Send, send me somebody that can minister to me. Tell y'all, people of God, there's something going on. There is something the matter when you lack spiritual discernment. Anything can get past you. Anything can enter into your radar and you not know it. You could be in a conference and you don't even know that God is not in it. How do you know that God is in something? How do y'all know that? How you know? Is it because the atmosphere is high? Everybody dancing? I mean, how do you know that the Lord is there? Can you discern this stuff? Do you scan the room for him? Do you ask him, Lord, are you here? You in this? We too familiar with folks. Just because you know somebody, you, you've been following them X amount of Z, Y's, years and time and months. You just automatically assume that, that God is with them and he is not. I saw that word biggest day on the first two slides first one said spiritual the second slide said discernment the lord wants me to release spiritual discernment and i have done that i released it i pray that you all will have a conversation with abba i pray that tonight you will ask him lord fill me up with more spiritual discernment not the gift that's not a gift just fill me up with spiritual discernment let me operate in the gift of um discerning of spirits Come on, know what you're asking. Paul said we have this confidence that we we ask we ask God. We ask of him things that line up with his will. We got to stop asking God for things that's opposite of what he says. And then get mad at him when you don't see it. But you didn't even ask nothing that lined up. You 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 prayed on this. You prayed out of vanity. He's not going to honor that. He's not going to give you an answer to that. We got to start praying God's will. Abba, what are you thinking? What are you? What's on your heart, Lord Jesus? What's on your mind? What you thinking about? How do I pray? What do I pray? Where do you want me to pray? What do you want me to pray? Who do you want me to pray with? Who do you want me to pray for? So Father, tonight we take authority over every viper every viper spirit. Father, I pray that this word has really resonated in someone. I pray that if they are being oppressed, possessed, depressed by devils, that Father, I pray that right now they get up from this grave. They get up off of these um, these, these, these bare feet. They get up from off of these beds. They get up, they take up their bed and they begin to walk in the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all help me pray. I pray that there will be armor bearers that will open up the window so that we can completely annihilate and destroy every viper spirit. That we will begin to completely and utterly abolish, demolish every unclean viper, every unclean serpent, every Jezebelic spirit, every Athaliah spirit that is after the babies, after the children, after the after the next generation, after Gen Z. We cover Gen Z in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way. Holy Ghost, speak, Jesus. There's some of you that the Lord has already been speaking to. He's already been dealing with you. 
He's telling you, I want more from you. I need to see more of you. There's so much more in you. There's so much more that you are capable to do. You are so much more. You have so much more that I'm qualified you to do. There's so much more. There's so much more. And so, Father God, we just covered the children in, in different states. The Bible says that rather there be um, people, watchmen, watching over the city, if God is not in it, if he's not covering the city, then the watchmen labor in vain. So, Father God, I pray right now that the watchmen are not laboring in vain, that they invite you first, that they invite you to cover them, that they may watch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, that you are doing a new thing. I thank you that God is purifying vessels. I thank you that He's purifying your um your cups. Your cups need purging. I don't know what we've been doing, what you've been up to, but the Lord is saying, it's time to purify these cups. Your cup cannot hold anything. Your cup, there's holes in it and it's dirty. So God is wanting to wash these cups. Hallelujah. Satan wants the cups to remain dirty. He wants the cups to remain unclean. He wants the cups to remain filthy. He wants your cups to remain where you can't contain or hold anything, where you can't maintain the word. By Tuesday, you forgot everything. By Thursday, you don't even remember. By Sunday, you just completely and utterly backslidden. That's the word falling on stony ground, falling by the wayside, not falling on fertile ground. The Lord wants the word to fall on fertile ground. God is going to begin giving you all some revelatory dreams, revelatory visions. He's going to tell you I want you to pray on Saturday with her. I want you to help her. I want you to begin to cover this, this, this. God is going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Some of you already know you got an assignment. The Lord is telling me right now that I've given out assignments to some of you and you have not yet done it. And so for that, you have to repent too. When God gives you an assignment, you cannot be lazy. You do not you do not get to pick and choose when it gets done. When God gives you an assignment, it already has a time stamp on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, I say thank you. I release this word off of me. Father, cover me in the name of Jesus. From every sabotaging spirit, every demonic spirit, and every Jezebel and Ephelia spirit, because I mentioned their names tonight, I rebuke you before you even try to show up in my atmosphere. I command you under the authority of Jesus Christ to go back down into the pit from which you came. Father, provide a hedge of protection around about every last one of us. Provide a hedge of protection around and encamp us with holy angels. Put a hedge of protection around our vehicles, a hedge of protection around our homes, a hedge of protection around our bodies, a hedge of protection around our children. Come on, y'all. A hedge of protection around our jobs, a hedge of protection around our minds, a hedge of protection around our eyesight, a hedge of protection around our hearts, a hedge of protection around our mouth. You want to have to start covering the stuff. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we say, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Come on, stuff is breaking. Stuff is breaking. Stuff is breaking. The enemy has been having some of us so bound up, so loose. that It's, it's, it's almost like I can hear somebody like they want to just scream. You just want to scream. The Lord says, let it out. Let it go. You just want to let it out and let it go. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I even see the spirit of suicide has been sitting on somebody. If you're on here and the spirit of suicide has been on you, I need you to come on and come on. We need to pray. We need to pray for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah,
He's wanting his people. Y'all, do you know one of us can put a thousand? Two of us can put ten thousand. We need to start speaking. We need to start encouraging other people. We need to start com- um, evangelizing to people, telling them about the Lord Jesus. Don't let don't let the sun go down and you have not ministered to one person. Don't go to bed at night not you have not told one person about your your God. Don't go to sleep without let. Don't answer twenty million phone calls a day and not one of them where you minister to to the Word of the Lord. We're going to have to balance. The Lord says we're unbalanced. We got a whole lot of worry, a whole lot of stress, a whole lot of anxiety, a whole lot of unnecessary. And then we we got like a little bit of an hour worth of word. We got 24 hours in a day. By the seventh hour, whatever was bothering you, got to go. Got to go. Hallelujah. It got to go. So, Father God, be glorified in us. Father, I lift up these people unto you. Father, you know every individual situation. Whatever it is they have need of. Father, I pray that you are raising up, not even just for me, but Father, for the body of Christ, that you are raising up helpers. You are raising up individuals that are going to open up the window and slam it on the viper's face. You're, you're raising up individuals that are going to intercede. You're raising up individuals that are going to be armor bearers. You're going to raise up individuals that are going to cover your people. They're going to be, you're going to raise up individuals that won't mind praying. You're going to raise up individuals that get stirred up under the, the anointing. You're going to raise up people that are going to begin to be activated in their gift, to be activated into their anointing, activated into their mantle. They're going to be activated under the, the anointing of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father God, I pray this prayer. Y'all pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, if you just just repeat, you can mumble it under your breath, you can say it out loud, but Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord, forgive me. I confess with my mouth that I am a sinner, that I am broken, and but your word says that you are near to the brokenhearted, that you are near to the faint-hearted, are near, Father, to the lost. And Father, I, I recognize you as my Lord and Savior. Come back into my life, Lord Jesus. Fill me up with your anointing, Lord Jesus. Fill me up with your word, Lord Jesus. Empty me out of all of me that you may fill me up with all of you. Oh, hey, Shekinah, Hallelujah. I believe you died on the cross and rose again for my sins. I believe the report of the Lord. Father, I may have gotten away from you, but Father, here I am standing in the need of prayer. A ratchet, undone, unjust, with a perverse lips. Father, heal me. Father, cleanse me. Father, purify me, and Father, activate me, that I may awaken, that I may arise, that I may no longer slumber, that I may be fully aware and fully awake of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, Father, deliver me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deliver me me. Um, Proverbs 6 and 8, 6 and 5 says, deliver thyself as a robe from the hand of the hunter. The Lord is wanting you to deliver yourself. Lay hands on yourself. Let somebody help you. Go through deliverance. Deliver thyself, he says, from the Deliver thyself as a robe from the hand of the hunter. Deliver yourself from the thing that's been hunting you. Go through deliverance. Take yourself through deliverance. If you're not strong enough, find somebody who is. 
but you got to deliver yourself. You got to get away. You got to get out of this, this, these snares. Hallelujah. And so people of God, I say be blessed, be at peace. And I pray that I'll see you on Saturday night. I pray that if you have any questions for me, that you you will reach out. I pray that the Lord is with you. I pray that God can trust you. I pray that God can trust me. I pray that God will fill us up with more and more and more till we overflow. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anybody uh, has any questions for me, uh, I'm still in the spirit. I'm just flowing in the spirit. Hallelujah. I can't see y'all, so, because I'm on my PowerPoint. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. But you guys have a good night. Uh, everybody's on mute, so yeah, I guess that means everybody is good. Good night. Good night. Good to speak a word to you tell him that you are willing that you are a vessel that you are yielding to him and i believe god is going to pour out god is going to pour out there's so much death in the land y'all there's such an unclean spirit there's such a spirit of heaviness that we don't have time to let that stuff soak in on us we don't have time to let that stuff sit on our mind we don't have time to be involved with foolishness we just don't have time this is why jesus said that when you they was looking for him he said did you not know that I would be about my father's business? I ain't got time to be nowhere else. What you looking for me for? You, you should have came right here. It's time for us to be about our father's business. No games, no half-stepping, no jokes, all or nothing. Sold out. Amen? Y'all be blessed and have a good night. And I love you. Y'all pray for me because my lights be. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. Good night. Good night.